Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, guys. Sometimes when I just come up here and sit down and start it, then it can be the best. Look at all these videos, okay? Look at all these tabs. Jesus. Giles. Uh, preemptive like. Three species that can be reintroduced to the UK. Rewilding Britain. Mossy Earth. Hey, guys, let's go. This were once a vastly different place. Landscapes were altered. The British Isles were once a vastly different place. Landscapes were altered by dams built by beavers and clearings made by bison. Wolves hunted packs of reindeer and it all worked in perfect balance. But island populations are known for being fragile and delicately balanced. Changes in climate, overhunting, or habitat loss can easily tip a species into local extinction. And while some birds can fly over and start a new breeding colony, most animals can't just wander back across our borders. Since we're not going to find bears swimming across the channel anytime soon, if we want them back, we need to bring them back ourselves. But is there even a place for these species anymore? We've seen a few species brought back in recent years, ranging from Eurasian beavers to large blue butterflies. So today we'll be looking at three more species that could be reintroduced. Beavers are so cool. With one that we should be seeing soon: the European bison. This is the closest living relative of the long extinct hey, bison, which used to roam the UK thousands. Okay, that that guy's a chonker. Um, but these ones look a bit smaller than the American ones. This is the closest living relative of the long extinct steppe bison, which used to That's roam a big the boy. UK thousands of years ago, but it almost went the same way itself. In the early 20th century, the European bison was declared extinct in the wild after being overhunted in Europe, but a population of 50 was saved by a zoo in Poland. That population was then bred, with the species gradually being reintroduced to conservation areas across Europe, and the plan is for us to be next. I was lucky, they will huh? be released into Bleen Woods in Kent for spring 2022. I was gonna say, how do they... When a species goes down to, to so incredibly low, isn't it going to have to resort to inbreeding in order to... Obviously, they, they, they were mating with other species, so not in this scenario, but... Is there a threshold where a species has to go under to where, you know, you might still have male and female left, but it, you're just not diverse enough to... They will roam I, 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 I don't know. I'm just AKA. asking questions here. In Kent for spring 2022, where they will roam a 1,200 acre area. But since they haven't been present for so long, why bother bringing them back? Well, bison act as a keystone species, meaning they shape the land around them and have an impact on many other species living alongside them. Their habit of debarking trees causes them to fall, which creates open areas in forests and creates miniature ecosystems for rare wildflowers and butterflies. This also results in the creation of standing deadwood, which is essential for fungi and many more species that are struggling in the UK. Much like beavers, they sound like a very destructive species to bring back, but their destructive tendencies could act as a lifeline for many of our struggling species. Needless to say, I think we'll all be keeping an eye on this latest project and keeping our fingers crossed, hoping for the best. On that note, I'd like to tell you about a rewilding project that we're undertaking here at Mossy Earth, but it's a bit different from the examples on this list because it's a tree. Eurasian aspen has been largely wiped out from Scotland, predominantly thanks to historical management of Scottish woodlands and the fact that deer have a particular taste for aspen saplings. In the spring of 2021, we committed to planting and protecting 10,000 aspen trees over the next five years, and a little over a year on, we can proudly say we've planted 2,700 so far. This is a little off topic though, so I won't go too in depth. But if I feel like this, I'm gonna go back, okay? In the spring of 2020, and a little over from Scotland. I feel like this sort of of terrain is very unique to to northern British Isles. If maybe maybe there's some Scandinavian or like uh northern Atlantic, North Sea, you know, Arctic Ocean islands that maybe look like this sometimes, but just the very gradual slopes and the very green and it just kind of looks cold. It, does that make sense? Okay, sorry. In the spring of 2021, we committed to planting and protecting 10,000 aspen trees over the next five years. And a little over a year on, we can proudly say we've planted 2,700 so far. This is a little off topic though, so I won't go too in depth. But if you'd like to find out more about this project and others, as well as how you can support us, you can do so on our website. 
Be sure to check that out if you might be interested, but now let's get back on topic and talk about a potential candidate for reintroduction that most of you have probably heard of, the Eurasian Lynx. The potential reintroduction of Lynx has been formally discussed since 2008, but in recent years we've seen discussions pick up speed a lot. They've been extinct in the UK for hundreds of years, likely due to hunting and habitat loss, and again they suffered a similar decline in Europe, but were saved from extinction by conservation efforts. One Question. argument in favour of their return is that they could help control the numbers of deer, particularly roe deer, whose numbers... Okay, so yeah, th this kind of answers it, but I can still ask it. So it's beautiful deer with the spots. Um, so if you're reintroducing a species, especially a predatory one, you obviously have to think of it's not just in a zoo, right? It's going to be living in the wild on its own to live and die on its own. So you got to think about what kind of prey it has, where it's abundant, and then put it in that area. Um, and then also, obviously, <laughs> don't put it in an area where its prey item is also on, you know, the conservation end. This is the case here, since large obviously. Carnivores disappeared from it is not the case here. Ah. Actually, roe deer, whose numbers have increased drastically since large carnivores disappeared from Britain. But with the benefits associated with reintroducing an apex predator come problems. While it's evidence that Scotland in particular could provide the large territories that Eurasian lynx require, the risk they pose to sheep raises issues with farmers. But that's less of a risk than it might sound. Where there are abundant prey species, lynx don't kill livestock often. They're characteristically shy, prefer to hunt in woodlands, and show a strong preference for eating roe deer. They could also help reduce fox numbers through predation, but that doesn't mean they wouldn't cause problems if they weren't reintroduced to Britain. Any reintroduction attempts would need to carefully consider how to mitigate the risks, so while a reintroduction is plausible, we'll have many more debates to hear before we see them return. That leads us on to our third and final potential species. The European elk, or moose as it's known in America, went extinct in the UK around two to three thousand years ago. When it Huge! One of the biggest animals I've ever, wild animals I've ever seen in my life, um, was a male bull moose. We saw a female up in Maine, uh, like two or three years ago, maybe four years ago. Um, and I I'll never forget it was kind of approaching nighttime, like it, it, it wasn't pitch black, but it was getting dark. And we were, had a fire and we were in a camp place. And then we, I, I look and probably 30 meters away, there's this giant bull moose with, a, with giant horns just kind of galloping. Like it didn't even look like it was in a full sprint. It was just kind of gracefully just galloping. And this thing was moving. Like in three step, in three gallops, it went. I I, I don't know. Uh, it's crazy far, and that it blew my mind just how large a, a, a male moose is. And it was here. America went extinct in the UK around two to three thousand years ago. But when it was here, it had a role in opening clearings and promoting natural regeneration through grazing and trampling. Currently, though, the UK has a big problem with the abundance of deer and lack of predators, so introducing yet another deer species could exacerbate this problem. With that being said, two elk were introduced to a. F it could also. Couldn't that also. I feel like a. a, a I'm no, I could be completely wrong here, okay? But maybe bringing another kind of deer species like a moose might contribute to the lessening of the deer population than a predator might even, because maybe they would chase away the deer from their, like, feeding grounds or something, and then that would... I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Deer species could exacerbate this problem. With that being said, two elk were introduced to a fenced enclosure in Allerdale Wilderness Reserve in 2007. This was not a formal reintroduction, but it served as a trial to understand oh, how they would cute. adapt to and impact the habitat. Unfortunately, it soon became apparent that they had to be fed extra by reserve staff to maintain their body weight, as there was not enough woody vegetation within their enclosure. Mm. This was made worse when legal complications meant they had to be kept in an even smaller enclosure, and in 2013 the decision was made to move them to more suitable zoos and parks. No reintroductions have been attempted since, and it's highly unlikely we'll see any anytime soon, but this example does provide us with some lessons around rewilding. Reintroducing species sounds a lot simpler than it is. 
History is littered with examples of species humans have introduced with high hopes only to mess up an ecosystem, and even if a species historically occupied an area, after centuries of absence, reintroducing them could easily cause massive problems. But these animals did play key roles in maintaining their respective How ecosystems legs and could provide plenty of benefits to the rest of Britain's wildlife. There are a lot of complexities, and we can never be truly sure of what will happen, so it's important to trial reintroductions on a small scale to start. Of course, doing things on a small scale is far more difficult with a 7 foot tall, 1 ton European bison than a pool frog or large blue butterfly. I, I feel like a big thing would be, are you doing it because it, like, like the same reason you'd want to make a zoo is because you just miss... Like, you, you want to see those animals again, regardless of if it might be good or not for the animals or the ecosystem? Or is it a legitimate, uh, smart attempt to help out some ecological issue there? Because uh, if you just want them there, just, just to have them there, then, I mean, things go extinct, you know? It, uh, if nothing went extinct then that would be very strange. Um, I, 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 what am I saying? I don't know. a seven foot tall, one ton European bison than a pool frog or large blue butterfly. It's easiest to just avoid debates around reintroducing a species by making sure it never disappears in the first place. So if you enjoyed this, I reckon you'd also enjoy our video on protecting Atlantic salmon in Scotland. Thanks for watching, and until next time, cheers. Cheers. Really cool video. Monster Earth, cool channel. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I'd love to see your comments down in the comment section. And I will see you guys next time, alright? Bye, guys.